Hello, my name is Drew Levine. I'm the editor of the Open Source Business Resource, and today I'm going to talk to you about BSD for Linux users. So maybe you've heard of BSD before, but you're wondering, what is it? Why would I want to use it? Or maybe you're a Linux user uh, who've used BSD in the distant past, and you're wondering what's happened in BSD land since then. So what are we going to cover? We're going to talk about what is BSD, and we'll give a bit of a frame of reference for that. Talk about how BSD is different from Linux. A little bit about release engineering process, what happens behind the scenes uh, for to give you your user experience. And we'll also talk about features that are unique to BSD, so you can get an idea for yourself if you're missing out on any cool features. So if we ask the question, what is BSD? It's very similar to asking the question, what is Linux? Because both of these are very wide encompassing terms. So what are we actually referring to when we talk about BSD or Linux? So if we're talking about Linux, the first question I would ask is, are you talking about the kernel? Because technically that's what Linux is. But unless we're having a very technical discussion as kernel hackers, that's probably not what we're referring to when we use the word Linux. Often what we're referring to is a distribution. But if you take a look at this slide, there are currently uh, 455 known Linux distributions. So which Linux distribution are you really referring to? Because they do uh, very, uh, differ very much. And typically, uh, especially in the last year or two, when you talk about Linux, you're typically talking about a popular distribution, which recently has been the Ubuntu distribution. That's the one that gets most of the media press and the one that is fairly easy for new users to use. If we were to talk about BSD equivalents, and we only have a short bit of time uh, to talk about them, um, I can give you a short introduction on the BSDs that are out there, because BSD is more than one operating system. And then we can concentrate on some of the differences. And mostly we'll be looking at PCBSD, which is um, pretty well the BSD equivalent of Ubuntu uh, for Linux. Very easy to use BSD distribution. So if we were to look at the various BSD projects that are out there, there are about half a dozen or so, and the differences in the BSD projects tend to be on their focus. And if we start with the BSD's projects in the order that they were created, the focus of the NetBSD project is clean design and the ability to work on different architectures. And currently, over 57 different architectures support NetBSD. The next project is FreeBSD, and its focus has always been server stability in a production environment and application support. Currently, FreeBSD supports over 21,000 applications. The focus of the OpenBSD project has always been security and a dependable release cycle. Uh, they send out a release every six months. One of the newer BSD projects is Dragonfly BSD, and their focus is on file system architecture. And PCBSD is the desktop version of BSD, and its focus is an operating system that's so easy to use, anyone can install and use BSD. If we look at how BSD is different from Linux, you'll see in this slide we have a spot the difference. It really depends upon what it is that you're looking for and what you tend to notice when you're looking at two different things. So some people, you can sit them in front of a Ubuntu or a PCBSD system and they won't notice any differences. To them, it just looks like an easy to use operating system whereas others will see differences right away. If you're using Ubuntu right now, you're probably used to the GNOME desktop. And if you look at a PCBSD system, what you'll see instead is the KDE desktop. 
And at first glance, it looks like everything is backwards and has been moved around. But if you take a closer look at both of them, you'll find that they're both doing the same thing, just a little bit differently. If we start to look more under the hood at some of the command line utilities, you'll start to notice that there are um, several differences between Linux and BSD. In this slide, I'm showing that there are differences in the names of uh, device drivers uh, for various hardware. So for example, on a Linux system, if I want to set up my Ethernet driver, Linux will call it ETH0 or ETH1. If I'm doing the same thing on a PCBSD system, I won't see any interfaces named ETH. Instead, I'll see interfaces that represent the driver name. So for example, it may be an ATH for an Atheros driver or an RL for a Realtek driver. If I'm a system administrator, I'll notice very quickly that on BSD systems, there aren't any run levels. Uh, instead, we have one configuration file where I can simply say yes and no to which services I would like to start at boot time. So this means I'm not going to find a bunch of uh, rc.d numbered directories containing shortcuts to startup scripts. And I'm not going to need a configuration utility to um, customize which services start at boot time. One of the other things we see on BSD operating systems is what I call the one config file philosophy. So rather than having a different utility and a different configuration file for everything I want to do, Typically, I'll find it all in one configuration utility. So for example, on this slide, I'm looking at the firewall rules on a BSD system. And in this one configuration file, I can set up my, um, my spam rules. I can set up uh, network address translation. I can set up my firewall rules. I could also set up uh, bandwidth limiting, and quality of service, all within one configuration file. Another difference we'll see is uh, if you're a system administrator or a power user is how you actually compile and configure a new kernel. So if I'm on a Linux system, I'll go through some sort of menu system or I'll have to click several hundred times to find all of the options I want to enable or disable in the kernel. On a BSD system, there's one configuration file. And as you can see from this slide, it's just a sim uh, simple text file where I can enable um, a piece of kernel functionality simply by removing the comment symbol. It's also being a configuration file makes it very easy to grep um, to see what capabilities are built into the kernel. The other thing we see in BSD systems is a consistent layout. And you can read about the layout on a BSD system by reading the man page for hire or hierarchy. One of the things that you'll notice if you're on lots of different Linux distribution is each distribution tends to have its own philosophy on where it puts things. I can go to any BSD system, and I'll know that binaries will be in bin directory, configuration files will be in Etsy, libraries will be in lib, and my logs and other variable files will be in var. Also, any of those directories that I find directly off root, I know that that stuff came with the operating system. And any configuration files, libraries, and binaries for third-party applications will always be found in USR local. This also makes it easier for me to set up a um, backup policy on a BSD system. And if I want to, I can put USR local on a, a totally separate file system to keep my third-party stuff away from the operating system. One of the first things that a Linux user will notice on a BSD system is that we don't have uh, GNU switches. 
So you know you're using a command line utility that uses GNU switches if it has a double slash followed by a word. BSD style switches are always a, a single hyphen followed by a letter. However, you'll notice from this screenshot where we're looking at LS um, on both a FreeBSD and an Ubuntu system, Ubuntu